So the next big conference we got here, this one was not an easy fix from what they had. We got the Southwestern Conference. This was fun for me. I wanted to do this. This was a big part of why I did this is because I think a return of the Southwestern Conference would be so much fun just to the average college football fan. What do you guys think? Yeah, I like the Southwest Conference. I think it. It's, but you got to get rid of the Big Twelve to do much, it, right? It's much better than the Big Twelve. It it absolutely splits up the Big Twelve in a north south standpoint, which is almost unneeded, right? Because of how far away some of those schools are from each other, which will make it a lot easier for some of the Texas schools to go to their non divisional games. The same way it'll be easier for Northern schools like kansas or iowa state to go to their new divisional yep. games and you could uh very easily put it in jerry world where it already is being played right and, uh i can attest to this conference how much i do enjoy the southwest conference uh i started a dynasty in ncaa 14 as the arkansas razorbacks in this in, in, in my setup, I actually took the time and rearranged. Jake and I have been playing multiple conferences <laughs> with multiple different teams just to see how this would start playing. And out. Um, it was interesting because this one made the most sense to me when I was first when you first showed this to me. I was like, yes, this one sounds the right way to do it because it's pretty much creating a Texas. Conference. It just looks out at you. It, 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 it shines through once you remove the Big 12 from the equation what you can create with the Texas schools to the non-Texas schools looks so much more reasonable. Right. When you have lower tier schools like SMU uh, or Houston playing Memphis and Tulane instead of having conference games in Cincinnati or on the East Coast. You know, this is what they should be doing. And so then even the bigger schools, man, Texas, Arkansas is back. How fun is that going to be? Well, um, that depends on how you do your anchored rivalries. Because right. It won't be an every year thing. What I did um, in, in my dynasty, the anchored rivalries, are, as they show on here, and you'll get to them, but it wouldn't work that way. But you Not would, for what you wanted to do with Arkansas, Texas. But you would get the Southwest West class, Club, my goodness, Southwest Classic of A&M against Arkansas every year. Right. And that's a fun rivalry that can be established. And, you know, if you're Arkansas, this is a good way to test your mettle because you're in a conference against LSU and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. So it's it's a chance to test your mettle, but it also is I think it's also well balanced. Because, Even the smaller tier Texas schools well, know mean, they can compete with the Big Twelve Texas schools. Houston can beat Baylor. Definitely. Come on. Yeah, the Texas division is stronger than the Arkansas River division, I will say that. The Arkansas but... River. Let's let's just oh, let's the just river. <laughs> let's meet that head on. It was really hard to be able to find a name that was non-Texas, you know, because you have the seven Texas schools, which another reason that this system just fits perfectly together like puzzle pieces. There's seven Texas schools that would be put on this level. And then seven non-Texas. There's Memphis and then schools in Arkansas. Louisiana and Oklahoma. What can you do that combines all three? Closest thing I could find was the Arkansas River that flows through all of them except Memphis. Yeah, uh, I think um, experiencing it with the dynasty and, and playing it that way, that's when I realized how well these teams can go together. And I think of all the conference setups that you have here, I think the Southwest Conference is the best one best constructed one i think because of just how easy this one i feel like this is where you always start this was a good starting block even this though, is where you build i i actually did start with the pack conference i thought that that, that was the very easy left, did you was, just go left to right yeah i did i started with the pack, pack and then definitely be what i did to do this i actually i created the pacific and then i drew the line of where i wanted to cut the big 12 and that's how i started this and that's how I think I've been able to look at it with a fresh eye compared to other people that have done something like this is because I did the left and then I cut the line of the Big 12. And so down here on the south side of the Big 12 cut, let's get into it. the teams that we have here. So the original teams from the Southwestern Conference, Texas, Arkansas, Houston, SMU, Texas A&M, and technically Oklahoma because they were in it for four years in like the 19... 19 and 1915 through there. It was like a four-year period. Before they went to the Big Eight. Right. But they were a member. 
And then newcomers that will provide a lot of value, like LSU, Memphis, Tulane. Come on, I want to play in the Superdome. Tulane is super cool. From a visiting team standpoint, from a fan standpoint, if I'm a Texas fan and I'm like, hey, Tulane, you know, we'll probably have more than half that stadium of Texas fans. I'm making that trip because it's however far you are, you know, depending Mm -hmm. on where you live in Texas. That's a lot easier of a say yes than going to Ames, Iowa. Definitely. Definitely. Superdome Superdome's a lot better than Ames. Superdome. Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> Jack Trice has made improvements, but we cannot compete not with the Superdome. With the Superdome. <laughs> it's not Memorial Stadium. Right. The other newcomer that is is kind of a tag along, and I don't mean to belittle them in any way, but Oklahoma State and Tulsa move along because that's where they are on the side of the Big 12 split. And they are big enough schools, Tulsa anyway, has elevated itself to this level of. Um, conference play Mm -hmm. based on how they've done in non-conference games against power schools as well as in their bowl games. Tulsa can play, uh, especially against, you know, maybe they're not going to beat Texas or compete against LSU year in and year out, but they can definitely roll with, like we said, Baylor, Memphis, Tulane, Houston. So there's, there's competition for everybody at every level. There are no bottom dwellers, and there are no immediate conference winners in any of these conferences. None. That's a cool thing about it. You also keep the right between Arkansas and LSU because they're in the same division. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that was one thing is people are like, oh, you move LSU from their SEC rivals. Well, you keep Arkansas. You keep the board. You get a border state rivalry with Texas and uh, like the Texas schools. You can build a rivalry with Oklahoma. And Tulane's in state, you know. So, let's let's get into the divisions and then the anchored rivalries. The Texas just to run through them, the Texas schools, Texas Tech, Texas, Baylor, TCU, A&M, Houston, and SMU. Seven Texas schools. There are a few smaller ones like UTEP, uh, San Antonio, <laughs> North pass. Texas. Yeah, yep, they They're not going to get in there. <laughs> they will be in the, the smaller uh, right. conference I took care of as well. But then the Arkansas River Conference, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Tulsa, Arkansas, LSU, Tulane, and Memphis. So the rivalries that we had to take care of, the one, no matter what, is Texas, Oklahoma. You have to have the Red you River. You have Definitely. to. There's, there's nothing else. You have to keep the Red River rivalry. It's so important. That's for sure. So then we look at border states. And what can we do border states and kind of equal, what I looked for was equal competition, border states as much as possible. Couldn't get a border rivalry with Memphis and Texas. So what I did was I found a school, I looked for the school with the closest drive. To Memphis that's on its level of competition. So SMU Memphis, they play every year. Same with Houston Tulane. That's the Battle of the Bay. I love it. <laughs> Come on. Look at what I did here. <laughs> and then we get the bigger schools, Texas A&M and LSU. I like A&M and LSU. That's been I, building as I an SEC that. rivalry. Yes. I would switch it to A&M Arkansas so you get the Southwest Classic like I mentioned earlier. That can be argued too. I hear you, but then I so would get TCU LSU. Why I would say that is I don't think that there's another team that's going to compete on LSU's level from Texas if you can't take Texas. I don't think, because what we have left is Tech, Baylor, and TCU. I, I, I would think put that TCU in that scenario. Possibly, and they can. I don't think they're on the level of LSU. They're not at the level they were a few years ago. I, I think they could compete. They can compete, but I think that uh, people in the area, based on what's happened in the past few years, would like an A&M LSU. You also get that SC, that old SEC and then you rivalry. Can, right, and then you they, can keep a higher-than-average higher, higher than average level competition rivalry started between TCU and Arkansas, which you could do with A&M and Arkansas as well because they are SEC as it is now. Yep. But what I have here is TCU, Arkansas, and then Baylor, Tulsa. Okay, so another border. You just look for the borders. And then Texas Tech. Man, Texas Tech is the one school they're in – a different time zone. I thought about putting them in the West just because they're in a different time zone. It's hundreds of miles to their divisional games within Texas. They're so far out there. But we kept them here. Texas Tech is going to play Oklahoma State every year and then all of the Texas schools every year as well. So do we want a rotating conference championship between like the Superdome, Jerry World, and, and Reliance Stadium? Personally, I think... Or is it formerly Reliance Stadium? Where are you talking about NRG Stadium? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Houston. Like, See, formerly, I knew, okay. I knew it was, I knew it wasn't reliant, but I couldn't think. 
I was like, it's letters, but I don't know the letters, so it's reliant. NRG, uh, yeah, I mean, I like, I think it's also, it's nice to have a single place where you go every year. I think it should be Jerry World. Because I think, I not that splitting it up is bad in any way, but going to, it's kind of like your Big Ten, Pac-12, where you say, if we win, we go to the Rose Bowl every year. You can say that same thing, like, we're playing in this in this championship game to go to Jerry's World to play in the in the Southwest Championship mm-hmm. game. You know, that's just a, a thing that comes out. The same in the Big Ten. You, right. you always go to Indianapolis. You always go to Lucas Oil. Which is a great which stadium. Is, yeah, which is a great stadium. And, and, and that's kind of like, you don't necessarily need three championship venues. One is One can build itself to be, that's the premier place. That's where you want to be. You could make an argument for the Superdome, or is it the Superdome? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Superdome. You can make The Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Yeah, you can make an argument for that and play where the Saints play. It's such a cool stadium, and that's Tulane's home stadium. Right, and you could... But exactly. that would be where... But it'd be a home field advantage. That would be where... LSU since it is a home would, stadium. Oh, LSU would dominate well. It's on, and it's on the very far that east LSU, side of the conference, which makes it true. less it should, appealing. It, maybe it should be in Texas. And that's why um, NRG's kind of in the middle. Yes, Houston but, is more in the middle between the in the conference landscape. If you but, have it at the Superdome, if LSU can get out of their own inferiority complex, <laughs> that they just, like, poop the bed whenever they play Clemson. a top-level team. That's what it used to be. Yeah, Clemsoning, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> you know, then then the Superdome would be a problem as a host. But I hear what you're saying, and you know, it probably you know Arlington's where they're gonna go. Yeah, it's just that's because you know who's gonna give the most money to do it? It's Jerry. Yep, that's it. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our in depth analysis on how to restructure college football. If you want to hear all conferences, you can hear the other installments of this on the Loud Sports Podcast or the long form on Loud Sports Podcast, or you can read it on my website at cornfedmedia.org.